A string of mass shootings in America has once again reignited the gun control debate. Most of the debate tends to focus on firearm production, distribution, and consumerism as avenues for intervention. But what about marketing? You won't typically see gun commercials, or gun billboards, or even gun advertisements on the web. Although there is no federal regulation on how guns are advertised, Many top media companies have strict policies against ads that promote or sell weapons. Yet firearm companies and influencers are able to post content across social media. According to a 2022 ProPublica analysis, 15 of the nation's largest firearm companies used loopholes to display millions of ads across Google systems. Some believe limiting the marketing of assault weapons could translate to fewer gun-related deaths. Those sorts of marketing campaigns, they work or, or the companies would not be spending money on them. It seems like guns are a no-brainer when you talk about dangerous substances. Some gun advocates believe firearm advertising is just a tiny piece of the pie. The gun industry advertising out there barely, like, can't even stand up to what's happening in the video game industry or the Hollywood industry as far as portraying firearms in a positive or a negative light. In May of 2022, the Committee on Oversight and Reform launched an investigation into gun manufacturers, seeking information on the sales and marketing of their assault rifles. So just how significant are gun advertisements? And should the U.S. take a bigger stance on regulating them? Firearm influencing and marketing can be traced back to exhibition shooters in the late 1800s. Annie Oakley, for instance, she was very famous traveling with Buffalo Bill Cody's uh, Wild West show. You had the couple known as the Fabulous Topper Wines. They were a husband and wife shooting team back in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. Uh, they were sponsored by a number of fire manufacturers. Throughout much of the 20th century, gun advertisements used to circulate in major U.S. papers and magazines. You had firearms advertising literally in, in regular publications, you know, newspapers across the country. You had exhibition shooters traveling the country. And these some of these events were, were hugely popular to where you had actors and actresses that would competitively shoot. You had professional athletes that would professionally shoot. Following the Cleveland School Massacre in 1989 and other similar acts, the 1994 assault weapons ban was enacted. Production of assault rifles, like the AR-15, surged in the months leading up to the ban, and then stopped completely. Ryan Bussey worked in gun sales for 25 years. In 2021, he published his book, Gunfight, My Battle Against the Industry That Radicalized America. 20 years ago, the industry did not allow in its own industry trade shows tactical gear to be displayed or advertised like that that has been worn by the Uvalde and Buffalo shooters and has influenced firearms marketing. It's now very aggressively marketed. The industry did not allow um, tactical gear to be marketed. Only a couple manufacturers as late as 2004 or five produced AR-15s. They were a fringe sort of military police thing. When the ban expired in 2004, most assault weapons were back on shelves. Now they're the very center of firearms industry marketing, and they're wrapped up in political identity and, and radicalization and extremism. So it's changed. With no laws prohibiting gun advertisements in the U.S., in 2001, gun control activists launched the national campaign to close the newspaper loophole, urging publications to stop the sale of illegal firearms through classified ads. By 2005, 33 newspapers changed their policies to prohibit classified gun ads from unlicensed dealers. In 2013, Comcast, NBC, Time Warner Cable, Fox, and ESPN banned firearm and ammunition advertising in most of its channels. Today, gun manufacturers and vendors turn to digital marketing to promote their products. Many of these ad campaigns still depict sporting, hunting, and military themes. But some of the more controversial ones use fear, sex, and hypermasculinity in order to influence consumers. Platforms like YouTube allow for content surrounding safety and education. Lucas Botkin is the founder of a firearm defense manufacturing company and an influencer with over 1 million subscribers on YouTube. I stick to teaching shooting, how to handle firearms, 
uh, in a safe and effective way. And then in addition to that, teaching people uh, how different equipment works, uh, what firearms are good, uh, how you know different pieces of equipment work with those firearms, uh, what they should buy. The biggest question people ask these days is, what do I buy or when do I buy it? The gun industry in America is a $36 billion business, and it's rapidly expanding. U.S. firearm manufacturers produced 11.1 million guns in 2020, up from 5.4 million in 2015. In addition to TV and print, major events that generate large crowds, like the Super Bowl and NASCAR, prohibit firearm advertisements. Many of these companies have turned to the internet. They're now using social media for advertising. You have different firearm trainers that want to promote proper firearms handling, that want to put that, they put on classes. Hey, this is how you properly carry a firearm. This is how you properly use a firearm. Without federal legislation banning gun advertisements, restrictions are imposed by individual companies and platforms. Activists have urged the FCC to impose restrictions on gun ads, similar to that of substances like tobacco. They say the research is comparable. That research truly demonstrates that the more ads that students see, whether it's on social media or the internet, the more likely they are to begin smoking and to continue smoking. And we don't have that same level of information collected on firearms adoption and use, but we can draw some connection there that viewing, witnessing, and learning more about firearms makes one more likely to choose to own and use and explore firearms as a consumer product. Gun advocates point to other potentially dangerous substances with fewer advertising restrictions. I don't think there should be restrictions. I mean, as a, look, as a free society, we have the First Amendment. It would be no different. Let's go into alcohol. You have all these different alcohol companies. You have beer companies, you have hard liquor companies. They all do their commercials. And how many people die at the hands of drunk drivers? Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok have policies against paid ad campaigns promoting the sale or use of weapons. But there are fewer restrictions on what content can be posted on your own profile. Among US adults viewing YouTube, 61% say they frequently or sometimes have observed videos with people engaging in dangerous or troubling behavior, according to one study. A YouTuber with 1 million subscribers can earn up to six figures monthly. Influencers are an important part of firearms advertising. In the same way, they've become an important part of advertising for a large range of different consumer products. Influencer work is a lot different than traditional forms of advertising in that it's sort of a homemade media content, relatable, much longer segments of videos, um, and there's engagement with the audience in terms of when people post comments or respond to them in different formats. One of the cases against firearm marketing is the potential exposure to children or those under the age of 18. In July of 2022, California enacted a law prohibiting firearm companies from marketing to minors. The law imposes fines of up to $25,000 for advertising that looks appealing to those under the age of 18. That same month, California signed another bill that would allow citizens to sue companies for marketing guns to kids, like this ad for a child-sized AR-15. I would just challenge that the uh, entertainment content that is being produced should be held to that same standard, that if it's not appropriate for uh, little Timmy to see an ad for a gun, well, then there's probably a lot of TV shows and movies they probably shouldn't be watching either. We can't have those sorts of things marketed, especially to, to troubled young teenage kids, which is what we've seen here recently. I mean, there's so many things that we consider uh, in our society that um, that teenagers are not ready for yet, whether it's, you know, tobacco, alcohol, um, you know, drugs or, uh, you know, pornography, all sorts of things. It seems like a gun would be at the top of that list of the most dangerous thing that you could possibly have. In 2016, Apple was the first company to swap out its pistol emoji for a water gun, for reasons unsighted. It came one year after a 12-year-old was charged with allegedly using the emoji as a death threat. While there aren't many studies directly connecting gun violence to firearm advertising, Gun control advocates point to recent mass shootings. In 2012, 
Adam Lanza used three different guns from his mother to kill 27 people at Sandy Hook's elementary school. Remington, the gun company that made the AR-15 assault rifle Lanza used, advertised the semi-automatic on the internet. Families of nine victims sued the gunmaker for promoting sales of the weapon appealing to troubled men. Remington settled the lawsuit for $73 million in February 2022. I would like to see legislation to rein in irresponsible marketing. As an example, the Buffalo shooter noted his extensive use of social media pages to research the tactical gear and the guns that he bought. So, I mean, it, it definitely has an effect and those sorts of marketing campaigns um, they work, or, or the companies would not be spending money on them. Google's ad policy bans guns, but according to an analysis by ProPublica, 15 of the nation's largest firearm sellers, like Daniel Defense, used Google systems to place ads that generated over 120 million impressions before and after a mass shooting. Google hasn't responded to requests for an interview, but they said in an email, while we offer tools for publishers to decide if they want to accept third-party ads for weapons, we do not block sites from running these types of ads if they choose to do so. It's a complex issue. We live in a complex country. I still own guns. Uh, I'm pro-gun. I want to continue to do that. But we're not going to have any rights in this country if this thing gets so out of control that our entire democracy... I mean, when we can't go to a parade as a family on Independence Day, over the past few years, activists have urged the FTC to investigate the marketing practices of big-name firearm companies for what they deem to be unfair and deceptive. Some of their reasoning includes misrepresenting an association with the military and causing substantial harm that is not outweighed by any benefits. In May of 2022, following the Highland Park and Uvalde shootings, the Committee on Oversight and Reform launched an investigation into gun manufacturers, including Daniel Defense, LLC, Smith & Wesson Brands Incorporated, and Sturm, Ruger & Company Incorporated. The three gun manufacturers did not respond to CNBC's request for comment. 